So you've been working hard, you've been training a lot, you've been getting the miles in, maybe doing some intervals. Feel yourself getting better, but you really don't know where to go from here. What's the main thing you need to work on? Well, I'm gonna show you today one of the things you could do to pinpoint what sort of areas you might need to work at to improve your general overall fitness. So what we're gonna do is have a look at a power performance chart, which you can find online if you just Google power chart or cycling power performance chart. Um, you'll come up with this chart. There's lots of different ones, but they're pretty much the same thing. They were set up years ago by um, some of the scientists who set up things like or started talking about FTP and the different zones we work at. Looking at this can give you a really good indication of where you may need to focus your training. OK, so here is the power chart. And basically what it's showing is your power to weight ratio at different times. FTP time, which would be a 20 minute power test, five minute power, one minute power, five second power. So whatever power you can do over that particular time scale, if you divide that by your weight, you will get one of these numbers here, your power to weight ratio. So for example, if you have an FTP of 300 and your weight is 100 kilos, 300 divided by 100 would give you three, which would be here. OK, so for each time scale, you can work out your power to weight ratio. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Down the side here, you can see what these power numbers equate to. So if you are world class, if you're in the Tour de France, you will be somewhere up here on the Tour uh, de France fan. You would be over this side. And then gradually working your way down the power zones or power targets. Cat one riders are going to be around here, five watts a kilo or four and a half maybe for women. Coming down to good for a, probably a good club cyclist would be around this sort of level. And then beginning racing cat four or moderate riding, you know, pretty good riding down to very untrained people with no sort of formal training of cycling at all. So how could you get these numbers? Well, if you know your FTP, that's quite an easy one to do because just divide your FTP by your weight and you will get your number here. If you haven't done that, you could do a 20 minute test and take 95% of it to work out your FTP. If you use a program like Trainer Road or Zwift, you will probably get a chart like this, which is a power profile chart, which this is for various seasons I've got here. Um, but basically it's showing your max power for the time at the bottom, whatever you've done in which season you've done it in. So for example, 20 minute power there, I've ranged from um, this year, I haven't really done a full 20 minute power test, or certainly not, certainly not on trainer road, so it's got no record of that, but it ranges from, as you can see, 250 to 270, coming up to nearly 280 when I was, uh, the fittest I've been probably. But then I can take other times as well, like this, like a five minute power. I can see what my five minute power is, and it's around 310, maybe 320 watts, 310 last year, 320 year, or a couple of years before that. And then I can take a one minute power. I'm not really worried about five second power um, because I don't do a lot of sprinting. And so although sprint training might be useful, it's not really sort of valid as part of my <coughs> overall training. Anyway, so I could get my numbers there. If you don't know your numbers, you could basically go out and do a five minute power test and see what your power is and then divide it by your weight to get these numbers. If you haven't got a power meter, it's much easier to refer back to, like I said, Zwift or Trainer Road if you've got a smart trainer, because that will give you your power figures may be inside, but it's still something like a ballpark figure you can work with. So looking at these and working out where I am, my FTP at the moment is about 250, my weight's about 72 kilos. So that puts me somewhere around there. Okay, so if I wanted to be a, an all round cyclist, I would like to have maybe some 
other measurements, other um, targets here, in around that level, it shows I'm really developed all round if I was straight across the board there. So 320 is my five minute power-ish. 320 divided by my weight gives me 4.4. So it's about here. Okay, so at the moment, it's not far off. It's in the same sort of ballpark, but maybe I'm slightly better. Maybe I need to work a little bit at my FTP and those longer efforts. I've been doing quite a bit of zone two riding recently over the last few months, and maybe now it's time to start upping that. But if I look at my zone one power, one minute power, my one minute power was or is only about high 400s, 500 at the best I was for, let's say, four, 450. So let's see where my zone or my uh, one minute power is rather on the power chart. And that equates to, oh dear, down here somewhere, around there. So I can clearly see what I need to work on. Okay, so these figures are pretty good. They're in that sort of area there. This one, however, is down there. That isn't really great. So probably what I should be doing now, as I said, I've been doing a lot of zone two training, but I can see quite clearly that I really need to try to bring that one minute power up by doing shorter intervals, one minute intervals, one minute on, one minute off, those type of things to develop my one minute power. And probably for me, knowing that where I live, it's not that hilly. Most climbs are a minute, two minutes, three minutes to go up. I probably should be working at this power, to try to bring this up a bit so that I can really um, perform better or at least stay with, you know, stronger people I know who are more sort of up this level or higher. And I've got a much better chance then of actually not getting dropped on chain gangs and things like that if I work at my one minute power. OK, so if you haven't got a power meter, what could you do? Well, obviously, if you know you're going on rides and maybe getting dropped up short climbs of one or two minutes, maybe that would be an indication of that's what you need to work on your one minute power repeating that by doing you know one minute on one minute off or one minute on 30 seconds off one minute on 30 seconds off that sort of thing and if you find yourself getting dropped on longer climbs maybe you should be working at that longer interval effort 10 15 20 minutes maybe repeating a couple of those to bring up your ftp power or trying some over unders where you just work above your sort of threshold level and then go down again, then above it and then down again to try to bring on your FTP. But anyway, I hope that was a good indication of where you can look to see where you are when it compares to other riders and other sort of categories of riders. And maybe it was going to give you a good indication of where you can improve. OK, so I hope you found that useful. If you have, let me know in the comments below if you've managed to work out where you need to uh, work on, what sort of aspects of your training you need to be focusing on, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.